We're so excited to have a conversation with Dr. James McClintock. He is an Antarctic researcher, an expert on Antarctica. And uh, Jim, it's great to see you again. Uh, Jim and I have been friends for a long time. I was very fortunate to have traveled to Antarctica with Jim to see um, the Palmer Research Station on the Antarctic Peninsula. And um, we're so thrilled to have you because of our IMAX film, Antarctica 3D, which you've seen. That's right. It's one of the most stunning films that uh, certainly you can see in your lifetime. And uh, Tom, it's great to be here today. And, you know, once two people have been to Antarctica together, they're soulmates. And uh, <laughs> so it's, it's wonderful to see you. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that this film is perfect um, for you because, um, you know, you've been below the ice. Uh, your research takes you underwater sometimes to see these marine invertebrates and other spectacular creatures. You know, Antarctica, of course, is known for penguins and whales and seals and things like that. And all of those are featured in the film, beautiful cinematography. Um, but it's what's below the ice and what's below the water that um, it's a very rare handful of people that have actually experienced face to face. And you're one of them. That's right. I was very fortunate to, to spend a decade working at McMurdo Station, the largest of the three U.S. Antarctic stations, and dove under the ice there in water where the visibility was three, four, five hundred feet, just stunningly clear. And the, the life on the seafloor, uh, the first time you drop below the ice and look down, you just can't believe the numbers of sponges and corals and starfish and sea urchins. This is one of the most rich marine ecosystems in uh, on our planet, really. Uh, and so to, to capture that on film, I sat and just was stunned that it really felt like you are swimming along got your scuba gear on and you're just swimming over the most beautiful landscape you can imagine. So to bring that to the public uh, as a, as a three dimensional experience, a 3d movie, it's gotta be incredible. I haven't seen it in 3d, but I am just absolutely thrilled to be coming up to the Tennessee aquarium to do this. If Antarctica was Instagram, Above the water, it's sort of you're uh, using the filters that are black and white. So, I mean, there's some blues with some of the glaciers and, and some of the icebergs and so forth, but primarily it's a black and white world. But below the surface, it is super saturated. There's colors that people can't even imagine. Beautiful yellow sponges, red starfish, green algae. I mean, it's just absolutely stunning. Yeah, it is very colorful. Tell us about your first trip to Antarctica and what your first thoughts were when you were on kind of this frozen continent. Well, um, I really, I, I went to the sub-Antarctic first, um, which was spectacular, but it didn't really have the ice features that you think of on the continent. So let me just talk about my first continental trip. Um, I got off a, a jet that had flown me down, actually a C-130 prop plane from New Zealand. Uh, I landed on the ice in front of McMurdo Station, which is the, the sea ice is the runway. Um, and my, my immediate thought about Antarctica as a whole was that the scale of the landscape is just stunning. Uh, we were looking across a 50 mile sound and the mountains on the other side of this 50 mile distance looked like you could reach out and touch them. The air is so rarefied that landscapes take on a whole new dimension. Uh, you'll see this in the movie. It is just stunning. Uh, so that that scale struck me very uh, strongly. When I worked on the Antarctic Peninsula, my first trip there, it was the wildlife that struck me. The penguins, the whales, the seals. Um, as you well know, when you go to Antarctica, the wildlife finds you. Yes. Um, you go to the Arctic and you may be looking for that polar bear and there's a good chance you'll find one. But in Antarctica, the, the, the wildlife finds you. Uh, even though we've told our guests on the Antarctic cruise that I lead that you are to stay 15 feet away from the penguins by international law, the penguins haven't read the Antarctic Treaty. <laughs> That's true. And, and they come right up to you. 
and just sort of look up at you like you're this strange looking penguin. Um, so the interaction, the behavioral interaction with the wildlife is spectacular uh, as well. Yeah, so um, one thing that I was struck, you know, again, the, the landscape, it is massive. I've heard people describe it as Alaska on steroids. And yes. it, it really is. If you've ever been to Alaska, you get just a small taste of what it is to be in Antarctica. But, that, you know, you talk about the air. The air quality is different too. When you breathe in, it, it, it it's some of the purest air that I think you, you could ever be around. And aside from being around islands with penguins, uh, there is no odor to the air. That's right. It's beautiful air. And, and the other thing that you and I were chatting about earlier today is that uh, it's one of the few places on the planet where you can actually just sort of go around the corner of a, a cliff along the shoreline and sit down and there are no sounds other than the, you know, a distant bark of a seal or something. Um, there's no planes going overhead. There's no humanity. You can truly lose yourself in the soundlessness of this landscape. It's, it's a wonderful feeling. And we tell our guests on the Antarctic cruises to do this while they're there. This is a special opportunity. So it, not only is the landscape stunning, but it, it's unique in its sounds, it's unique in its uh, smells. Uh, just a, a fantastic experience. I, I remember sitting on one of the beaches and taking that advice and kind of moving away from the group and sitting down on a rock. And while you're you know, listening to the waves and, and hearing the, the penguins off in the distance, suddenly I felt something at my feet and, and here was a penguin standing on my boot looking <laughs> up at me. And I thought, That's this wonderful. is really incredible. And you know, it's unfortunate that more people are not afforded that opportunity, but it is very fortunate that we have things like this Antarctica 3D IMAX film to take people there virtually and give them those experiences. One of the most gratifying things for me personally was to see Gen 2 penguins in this film and also on exhibit here at the Tennessee Aquarium and knowing that, um, you know, my experiences in Antarctica were the same as standing in the Penguins Rock Gallery at the Tennessee Aquarium, and you see those natural behaviors. And that was very gratifying to me that, that the penguins here in Chattanooga behave exactly like they do in Antarctica. So for those folks who may never have the opportunity to go to Antarctica, it's very cool that you can come to downtown Chattanooga and, and see that for yourself and experience that. I completely agree. That's a wonderful exhibit. One of the one of my favorite ones whenever I go to the Tennessee Aquarium. And you've been in there with the birds. <laughs> and I have been in there with the penguins, yes. And they each yeah. have a very different personality, I remember. Yeah, they're a lot of fun. So tell us a little bit about your research because, um, you know, people sometimes hear stories about um, a warming planet and the implications for uh, humans. And when you hear about the Antarctic ice shelves um, breaking up and, and changes happening, it seems so distant and remote that it's hard for people to wrap their minds around that what is happening at the very southern end of our planet does have implications for us here in the southeast. You're absolutely right, Tom, and there's, there's several different ways that this is happening. One is that the Antarctic is a current generator, and there's massive uh, ocean currents that are generated in, uh, around the continent of Antarctica that feed up into the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans and the Northern Hemisphere that are influencing our climate. So as the Antarctic currents are warming, we're seeing effects here. Um, and also in my own research, my own personal experience, you know, you know that I'm a marine uh, invertebrate zoologist and I study the ecology of these marine systems. But also what's been wonderful is that we have a program called Chemical Ecology and Drug Discovery. And we have discovered over 30 years of research that Antarctic marine organisms, things like uh, sponges, for example, uh, can have uh, chemicals in them that could fight cancer or AIDS or cystic fibrosis. Uh, we had a, a red alga that uh, had a chemical in it that's active against the H1N1 flu virus. And, and think what we're going through now with COVID. Um, there could be cures, and I'm reasonably sure there are, in these Antarctic ecosystems that we certainly don't want to squander because of climate change. So this is a, a wonderful way to think about how the impacts of climate change uh, go to our practical daily lives. So people may scratch their head and say, well, how is that possible, Jim? What's, what's going on with these animals? But you've explained it as these are animals that can't swim away very fast. 
Correct. and they don't have big sharp teeth or anything so That's they have right. to come up with other ways to protect themselves animals are very ingenious when it comes to protecting themselves and uh, if you don't have a shell to hide in you don't have spines to protect you something is going to want to eat you and so there's a whole group of organisms that have developed toxic chemicals and um these chemicals, believe it or not, have a huge potential to fight different kinds of human disease. So they're toxic, but they're not necessarily toxic to us as humans. They can be toxic to a cancer cell uh, and not to healthy cells. So this is a, a very important thing to realize. The other thing is that the, the biodiversity of the life there on the seafloor is so immense. Uh, it's a very old ecosystem. There's been a lot of time for different species to evolve. And so the library that we're pulling books out and looking at for medical discoveries, really, we just cracked the door. Um, and so it's important to remember that uh, there's so much to be lost if we lose this ecosystem to climate change. Uh, so another reason why we really need to address the root cause of, of climate. I got a big kick out of visiting the Palmer Research Station with you um, because one of the buildings, believe it or not, has a big sign on it, aquarium. So yes, in Antarctica, there is an aquarium. There is an aquarium, that's right. <laughs> when you go behind the scenes, it sort of looks like going behind the scenes of the Tennessee Aquarium because uh, it's not a commercial uh, venture. It's not a public aquarium like the Tennessee Aquarium, yeah. um, but it, it has many of the systems to support work that you and your colleagues are doing. That's right. And one of the highlights of my course I teach here at the University of Alabama at Birmingham is the field trip to the Tennessee Aquarium. And my students have loved getting behind the scenes and seeing all the things that are going on. And they've seen my uh, my slideshows about Antarctica. So they know that, you know, they're they're essentially seeing some science going on right there in Tennessee. Yeah. And um, when you go there, it's in a way. Um, not directly comparable, but there are similarities to being astronauts because you have this, you know, isolated place that you stay. Um, like astronauts, you can venture out with your specialized gear to go below the surface of the water and uh -huh. explore. Um, but there are certain challenges and you, because of the pandemic, experienced some of those uh, trying to come back from this very remote location. That's right. I happened to be down at Palmer Station uh, in February and March when the COVID uh, scenario just first broke. Uh, it was quite the adventure. I, I really could write a, a short book or a chapter about it. Um, we did get across the Drake Passage all, uh, you know, three and a half days of cruising on our, our, our science ship to get to Chile. But what was surprising was when we discovered the Chilean government wouldn't let us uh, land because they were worried about us bringing COVID. We finally convinced them after several days that we could dock and because we were the safest people on the planet, actually, there wasn't any COVID in Antarctica. And then they wouldn't let us off the ship at the dock. Um, for several days. And then eventually we were smuggled off the ship early one morning to the airport where we were fortunate to get up to Santiago, Chile. And then uh, a United flight took us to Houston. And we were, you, you would have, the, the, the clapping, the hugs of 26 Americans landing in Houston after the COVID escape from Antarctica was quite something to behold. Um, so my research goes on at Palmer Station. There's a brief hiatus for a year from COVID and some construction going on at the lab, but uh, we will be back. Yeah, well, it's been a fascinating discussion. And if people want to learn more, about your work, um, you've actually got a couple of, of cool books. One is uh, about Antarctica. The other, anybody who loves the outdoors, especially fishing, would love to read that one too. All right, yes, uh, Lost Antarctica, get it on Amazon, and uh, Naturalist Goes Fishing. Uh, they're both available, and uh, yeah, if you, if you come see the movie, I'd be happy to sign your book. I've been um, on a ship across the Drake Passage and in and out of the Antarctic Peninsula with you. Uh, but after reading your second book, I would love to go uh, down to, is it Chanticleer Islands? Uh, Chandelier. Fishing. Chandelier, yeah, I would love yeah. to go down there and go fishing with you. Somewhere. All right, we'll work on that, Tom. <laughs> Thank you for joining us okay. and uh, look forward to seeing you soon. Okay, my pleasure. Come with me on a journey into the unknown. To a wilderness few have dared to explore. 
Antarctica. A continent only discovered 200 years ago. Now revealing its secrets. A world full of life. Full of wonder. And full of the unexpected. Extraordinary stories. Captured for the giant screen. Discover how what happens here affects us all. BBC Earth's Antarctica. Now playing.